Good morning. Today is the 29th of September and now we've finished the Rustival 2 footage. Here we are at the Milton Keynes Museum for the British Leyland Autumn Rally. I've been coming to this for years and years and years. It's something I very much enjoy. Actually the weather's turned out to be quite good today. I do apologise in advance if I get things wrong, if I fall over and uh, also, well, we don't talk about diesel on this channel viewers as uh, most of you know so we shall continue to not do that. Sort of in this section here, it's mainly uh, sort of Rover 200 and 400s and the odd 45 and things. But this MGF is here, this is a 2001, it's one of the later ones. Similar in age actually to the one that I drove to the BMC Leyland show um, back in July. And also the obligatory beers and bangers sticker. And something utterly delightful, this is a 2002 Rover 45 V6. This is the um, Connoisseur model. It's actually got some other bits on it which are non-standard, like this two-litre badge on the door there. And I used to know the owner of this. I just spoke to the son of the current owner who bought it off um, my friend Wayne. Um, it actually, in some ways, in better condition than the one that I had. I had mine until uh, July last year. It's now in the care of uh, Reverend Parry Hughes from the Boaties World Channel. Uh, but it's nice to see it. The 45 V6s are exceptionally rare cars. They made about 700 of them in total. There are now less than 50 on the road. And there are reasons for that. I talk all day about that. But um, just to say that it's nice to see a 45 V6 here, especially in this colour. So, uh, classic R8 here. This is uh, one of the late pre facelift ones with the modified indicators, which came along in um, sort of late 1992 and 92 93 plate on this one. And it's a 220 GSI. So, a G GTI, not GSI, GTI with towed security on it. Um, excellent. We do like this view, as we like it a, a great deal. The three doors are quite rare. For some reason at Rover they thought you could have a coupe or the three door, so they made both. And here are some Tomcats, fantastic, K Reg, so same as the other one. All the uh, Tomcats came with the sort of what we call the round the corner indicators, so introduced I think late 92. Um, same colour, both of them, I can't remember the name of this red. This is Nightfire red though, and so is uh, one there, but these are the later ones. They didn't facelift them exactly, apart from putting the grille on in sort of, I think, uh, late 93. Um, but they did change the interior. The dashboard in the later coupes, like this one, um, is the sort of one from the Rover R3 200. Got a set of uh, nice Cosmos wheels on this. When they put the new dash in, which is late 1995, they also changed the engines um, to the 1.6 K series and the 1.8 VVC K series. What these two are, I can't remember. Somebody can tell me in the comment section below uh, whether the wheels mean you've got the 1.6 or the 1.8 in these. I've driven a 1.6, I drove it years ago. It was very similar to this car here. I think a sort of similar interior and everything as well. Um, they do drive well, these Tomcats. I've driven two of them. Um, a 220 from 1993, Bronson, Mr. Furious Driving, and then that uh, later one, which was African 98. This one though is one of the last of the uh, one with the older dash in it, probably a 220. Um, you get a Honda engine one as well. Normally the, tu the turbo ones say turbo on the back of it. This doesn't say that, so I imagine it's for 220. It could even be a 216, um, but I don't know. Either way, I'm delighted to see those. And let's go to the other side to see some more Tomcats. So some of the uh, most famous of Tomcats are so-called FDH cars and you'll see straight away with the number plate on this why it's called an FDH car. This was a batch of uh, Tomcats were destined for I think Japan and so they all have things like a leather interior and uh, they have um, air conditioning which is a very very rare option in this country on a Tomcat um, but they were re-imported over here um, and all registered of the same sequence. So we have a very nice beige leather interior viewers and we've got some wood. But yeah, so the FDH, very high spec ones and all registered together. And that looks absolutely brilliant. I think it was 95, 96 I registered all the FDH cars. Then we've got one that's um, got the T-Series in it. It actually has the, the Japanese um, market plate on it as well. Strut brace and all sorts of things like that. So got even more power than standard. I think this is a turbo one. 
Yeah, you've got a number of Japanese spec rear plate on that as well. Wonderful. Another one of the later ones here, 1998-1999 registration. Last year for them was 99. Um, I think this is just maybe a 1.6. Towards the end of this would be this car, they were called the uh, 1.6 coupe, not the 216, um, for reasons I'm not quite sure why. Another FTH here, um, Tahiti Blue, I think is the name of this colour. And someone's actually got the original headlamp protectors on this one. So yeah, leather interior, not beige leather, but uh, you know, there we go. Um, I can't quite see the air conditioning control in there, but it'll be in there. And we have rear wiper action, of course. Interesting, um, sort of iridescent colour on this one. Japanese spec number plate. Ooh, and a beige leather interior with a part wooden steering wheel. Fantastic, we do like that, viewers. Again, um, kind of like the FDH cars with the earlier dash in it. I forget the name of that colour now. And then uh, another one about this sort of time as well, another Ren plate. Again, Nightfire Red. You can see here the common issue with them is, uh, well, it's the rust, which someone has addressed here. Um, and we'll have to address some more, sadly. And that is a 220 Turbo. Fabulous. And we've got um, 200 Cabriolet. This is, again, one of the later ones with the Rover R3 dash in it. High spec one, actually. I wonder if this is the uh, 1.6 or 1.8. Not sure. 9798 registration. Got a 25 here with a couple of these here as well. This one's actually for sale, would you believe? And they don't want a lot of money for it either. Someone's had a go at sort of dealing with some of the little rust spots on this car. Um, we've got parking sensors, which is unusual. That was not standard at all. That was a, an option on something like this. But we can see here that it's for sale. It's an Impression S, which is a very common specification back in the day. And they only want £750. Which is no budget reviews money. Uh, call John on 07760434669. As Mr. Bill from the Fuel Power Channel says, this could be yours. <laughs> so we've got actually a, a much earlier car here. This is a, an R8. It's um, the pre faced of me. We've even got around the corner indicators on this. So this will be the uh, 95 brake horsepower K series, 1.4. Very, very nice interior on this. Um, so I think an SLI interior, this. Yep, 214 SLI. Um, 92, just before they brought in the uh, other indicators. Very, very nice condition. The um, early R8 I had, which is a, um, a 91, the one I had, was this colour, but it wasn't as nice as this. I mean, a 200 VI. These are very, very rare indeed. And before you ask, yes, Mr. Richardson for viewers driving has one of these, and I have driven it. I drove it in the 2022, I think it was. This one is in fantastic condition. You can get a three or a five door. This is a five door. Um, 98, 99 registration. You can see the engine bay is immaculate, and there's that VVC system at the top there. Early 45, this one, 2000 registration, with some headlamp washers. This, I think, um, a saloon would be probably a club. Um, we've got the older style door cards, but again, just like the one I had, um, the uh, they're coming away because that's what happens with these. I wonder how headlining is. But yeah, very nice, um, nice colour. And then um, 416 GSI. Not all the GSIs had a leather interior, it was an option. This one, um, B, well, with personal plate, but be late 92 or later. The 400's got the round the corner indicators and the, the grills actually before the 200's did, which is weird. Late pre facelift um, 25 here. Um, like the one I had, a 2003 one in this colour myself years ago. This has the uh, Marshall Emission Zone compliant engine, which is good, and then the white dial, so it's after the middle of 2003. It also had the Ford gearbox in it, which was introduced after. Um, BMW put the price of gearboxes up because they had the factory where they made the gearboxes and um, MG Rose said okay well we'll go to someone else so they did so any 25 or 45 um, or ZS or ZR up to 1.6 litre petrols had four gearboxes after the middle of 2003 very late MGF that one very late 2002 that's a 
it's an automatic one as well. Interesting. Um, right at the end of uh, the production of the 200 R8s, there was a special edition called the 214 SEI. This is one of them. A very, very popular special edition. Um, this is 94.95 in this colour, two-tone. Um, really nice cars, actually, the 214 SEIs. Nice seats. And the three-door models are quite rare. Hmm. I'm actually kind of more excited, though, by these SD3s. There's two of them here. They were both at Russell yesterday. This is a uh, 1989 216 Vitesse in left-hand drive. Love the wheels on this. And then this is a 1990 213SX, which was kind of a bit like a Vitesse, but a run-out model. It was one of the very last of the SD3s produced. Registered, I think, April 1990, this one. And both of them are absolutely immaculate. I prefer the Vanden Plan model myself, but, um, you know, I'll take what I can get. Another one of these three doors. Um, this has got the uh, later Cosmos wheels on. I think they might be off, like, I don't know, a 45 or something. But it's a 220 GSI Turbo. That is a rare, rare car. Very rare indeed. Um, 9495 registration. Another very early 45 here. This is, a, I think, this colour was first year production only. Launched January 2000, so matches a plate. Quite a high spec one, probably like an IXL or something like that, I think this one would be. Um, not so good on my sort of early 45 trim levels, with, I know the later ones. And the predecessor, which is very similar actually, as you can see, is this 400 here. By 1998, 1999, this car was registered. They didn't put the uh, exact specification on the back of the cars anymore, which is frustrating if you want to know what it is. Um, so we have to look at the information sheet to see exactly. Oh, it's quite small. Here we go. It's uh, a, a 414i. There we go. Um, they look very similar all the way up to like you know 416, and then the 420s look quite similar in some ways. Another one of these uh, three-door R8s. Maybe they're a bit more common than I thought they were. This one looks very much like a GTI. Those wheels are off uh, Tomcat Coupe, I think. Yeah, 220 GTI Turbo as well. Ooh, viewers, very exciting. Very exciting indeed. And then another 45. There's actually two of them in this colour here. Say so a 2002 to 3. Um, still got the uh, wood strips on the door card, so just before they took those out, I imagine. And then I think this is a 420i, this one. It's a late HHR. And it's in very, very nice condition. Local, um, locally owned car, by the look of it, put in by the plate from the garage there. 99. T14SI, which is sort of towards the bottom of the range. There was a 214i as well at this time. Um, this has the later grille and later indicators, so it'd be um, after like late 1993. And then. Right, minor indiscretion views. I'll have a look at this facelift of 25. MG Rover press plates on this. Similar wheels to the 45 that we can't discuss. No leather interior, so I don't think it's a GLI or GSI, um, but very late. The production of these, of course, finished April 2005. Um, this is registered either just before or just after that, which is, which is good. Another R8 here. 216 GSI. I wonder if this is a manual or automatic. We've got the upgrade wheels on this, which is shared with the GTI. It's manual. I can't see the seats on here to see we've got the leather interior or not. The leather interior wasn't standard on the GSI, but it was, it was nice. Um, the grille, obviously, was a popular thing to put on. You can see what this car would have looked like originally by looking at this car on here. This is a 214 SLI. So both, both this and the other one in the same colour are very, very similar specification. Can't believe how much, many of these are left here today. I'm delighted to see them, my viewers. Very much so. Very, very happy to see all these here. Um, remind me of the three r i I've owned myself, all 216 SLI automatics. All three of mine were that. And then an MTCS 180, because of course, they did make them in... Um, 
both um, saloon and hatchback. This is a hatchback. Be one of the later pre facelift ones. And that's one of the monogram colours, but I can't remember exactly um, what that one's called now. Typhoon. Typhoon, thank you very much. And then we've got a ZR here, face of ZR, 2005. This is a um, 105 Plus. I think, I think the uh, 105, you can tell by the wheels, but I might be wrong about that. It's also delightful. And then a 200 BRM, excellent, very similar in specification to the VI over there, but we've got these um, what some of unique alloy wheels, we've got the uh, front air intake, we've got the red interior. At the time, which is a real shame, these cars didn't sell very well, they couldn't really get in the way, it was, it was a real shock actually, um, but now they're very highly priced, and one in this sort of condition, this is a 99 car, would be very valuable. We do like uh, BRMs very much, viewers, and I've just been offered one for review, so we'll see about on the channel at some point. Another very, very nice 45. This is a sort of conquest when it comes to like everything, this particular one. It's a 2002 Impression S, which um, I've seen at all sorts of different shows. <laughs> I think, though, my photo 45 is still the V6 one, but that's because I'm very biased, viewers. Um, your opinion might well vary. Let's have a look at some marinas and Itals. So, very late marina here, registered I think like 1980, 1981 this one. Um, Vermilion is the name of this colour. See, to remember, this one was registered far after the marina production finished for reasons that I can't remember now, but somebody in the comments section will tell me. I've seen this one before. So, 1300L. Uh, towel came in on a V plate. And then um, one of these Morris Marina based pickups, I forget now what these were called, I think the 575 is what they were called. Weirdly, um, this is actually different again. The standard dashes for the commercial variants of this were different from the um, standard cars. We'll see an example of that later. But yeah, that's had a 5-speed gearbox put in it. Um, 7374 on an M, nice colour that. And then a Marina TC, 7273 on an L. Very nice high spec with this big opening sunroof. So there's the um, standard dash for the early marinas. The later ones have different dashes in them. Um, I forget the name of this purple colour now. But that'll be the 1.8. Then we've got the uh, 1.3 marina here. This is a, on a K, so 72, 72 approximately. Um, little basic dash in this one. You must be very careful of these actual wing mirrors and not get caught on those. Maybe it tells me the name of this colour here. Oh, sorry, it's 71 or 72, this one. It's Autumn Leaf. Excellent. So, an early marina, but not the earliest one. We'll see the earliest one remaining a bit later on. Another one in this sort of purple colour. This time, we've got a coupe. Coupes were made uh, right up till the end of the marina in 1980. And uh, the marina I have driven is a 79 coupe. So again with the earlier dash in this car, it's a 1.8 and then an Ital. I, I very much like Ital's viewers. I've been after an Ital for review for years but never quite managed to get one. It's got the uh, later dash which is common with the Series 3 Marinas where the radio faces away from the driver which I've never understood why you do that but there we go. 1.7 SLX which I think was the top of a range car and this would have been new of 83-84. The 2 litre SLX was discontinued a bit before that. And then a fantastic blaze red marina, 73-74 um, on an M, with a roof rack, Marina Super Estate. And that is the 1.8. It's a very similar car to this in the professionals, actually. One episode called Servant of Two Masters, also in this colour. 7374 Marina Coupe. It's, um, it has a 1275 GT sticker on it, but I don't think that's original. You can see the front end, it's got the 1.3 engine. The 1.8's like this one, and the 1.3's did have different grille on the early cars. Fantastic, we've got <laughs> another early Marina here. Does it tell me what colour this is? No, I can't quite see. 
again, very nice. Really typical, typical 70s colour, this one. And then another blaze red car, this time a, a 1.8 TC coupe. The TCs do look quite different from all the others, don't they? Again, blaze red, 72, 73. Another Rital, this one's 71, sorry, 1981 to 82 on an X with vinyl roof. Fantastic. I don't know what engine's in that. Then we uh, have another early Marina, 73, 74, 1.8 Super. See, we've got the TC grill on that. And then this um, commercial, it's a very strange sort of hybrid. It's got a marina front end, but it's got a towel door handles, and it's got a dash that doesn't look like a, a, a towel on a marina dash. It's a very basic looking dash. Look at that. Wow. Again, sort of um, on a W so. 1980 to 81, just called a 575. Now we said earlier, earlier on we were looking for some early marinas and this is the earliest one they know I think. Look at the, the way the track is really really in board of the wheels. It's a 71 on a J and it's it's immaculate, absolutely immaculate, but it's one of the earliest marinas surviving, if not the, the earliest marina that survives. And look at that, it's absolutely beautiful condition. Right, let's uh, go down and have a look at some more marinas and towels. A couple of Series 3 marinas here. One, I think this is russet brown, this colour. Let's have a look at the back to see what specification this is. It's a marina 1700. The Series 3s from 78 onwards had the um, O Series engines rather than the um, B Series engines in them. And then the Beautiful condition, another Series 3, really late registered car, 8081 registration, 1700 HL, again with vinyl roof. For some reason, these cars didn't have a badge on the steering wheel at all, which is odd. So another commercial one here, again with the like marina style front end, but well after the Metal came in, 8182, so Metal door handles and with that sort of funny basic dash in it. I wonder if it's a, like a 1.3 or something. And we've got another one coming in here. I'm surprised how many marinas are actually here. There's tons of them. Considering the survival rate is quite low for them. And that's uh, for obvious reasons, viewers. They did like to rust, also where they weren't worth a lot. And then, um, you know, some gentlemen came along in the 2000s and started dropping pianos on them, so you know, that um, didn't help. Yeah, again, this sort of very dash. Marina Super. I'll look at the front end, and we can see straight away that is a 1.3. And now we're into the princesses. There are four princesses here. There's another princess-based car as well we'll look at in a second, in a different area. Vermillion here is a 79 princess. This one's an automatic. Very, very nice condition. I drove a Princess in 2022, it was a 2200 HLS, and also a Princess 2 like this one. And it was brown over brown over brown, which was amazing. Very late Princess 2 here. You can see on these V-Reg cars, remember this X-Reg one, actually the badging got different towards the end. And this, this will be sort of 81, 82. Um, the Ambassador didn't come in until March 82, so there was a bit of production gap with these. Ambassador, of course, is a car I finally drove earlier this year. So I had both of them. And then a lovely sort of 7980 one here. Looks quite high spec this one. Yeah, that one is a 2000 HLS and that was a, also a 2000 HLS, but badged differently. And then a 2000 HL, um, 1981 registration. There's a time when these are worth like no money at all, but they're quite desirable now, these princesses, actually. I understand why. So this is a tribute area to Harris Band, as, as many of you know, who passed away last year. And these are some of the cars that he designed. So we've got a 1978, a late Series 2 Marina, 
It's a 1.8 special. Again with vinyl roof, it looks looks amazing this car. The condition of this is superb. Absolutely fantastic car. Then next we've got a, a Series 3 Allegro, it's 1.3 HLS. I've seen this car many times before. With the um, Series 3, the higher spec Allegro's got different front lights. So the quad front lights on this, um, was it 81, 81 approximately this car? And then a real rarity, this is a pre-production Morris 1800, it's what became the Princess after September 1975. When uh, this design was originally launched in March 75, there were three versions available, Austin, Morris and Walsley. Um, this is a Morris version, it was made in 1974. I think this is blaze red. The car wasn't actually registered until 1977 for bizarre reasons, so 1800 sort of more basic spec but in really nice condition now, it's been fully restored. Then a Triumph TR7 with the V8 engine, TR7 V8 rather than a TR8. And this is a, a late Canley built car because of the boot lock, would have been uh, made in 1980. 8081 plate. And then um, a lovely Mini Metro. Mini Metro was the name for the first couple of years. 8182 plate on an X, and actually an HLS. So we've got the uh, chrome door handles on this. A bit below the Vanden Pla that came a bit later, but it's with a 1.3 engine. Absolutely superb. Leyland cars, a great deal and a great deal more, of course. Let's finish this part by having a look at some Edio 16s. The first is what I consider to be my favourite version. Actually, there are two favourite versions here. This is a very, very late Riley Kestrel. It's one of the very last, because the whole Riley make was discontinued the same year as this car in 1969. And being an H-plate, it's late 69. Well, I don't know why they got rid of Riley. It's such a shame. We've got luxury and sportiness. We've got a um, rev counter in those, which you didn't get in this Van Den Plaar Princess 1300, which is a shame. Apart from that, 68, 69 registrations are very similar in age. We've got... Um, picnic tables, we've got a beige leather interior, we've got a wooden dash, this one's a manual um, and, and utterly superb, I really really like both the Riley and Van Den Pla. fantastic also got um, some other versions here, we've got a Walsley version, Walsley 1300 it's a Mark II again I think it's a 68 look at that more wood but no rev count on like the Riley I don't know if those are leather seats or like um, vinyl seats, I'm not sure. But there we go, yeah, August 68. Mark. One twin carburetor model. What was this? It's Mark II, okay. Well, the owner will know better than I do. This is a Mark II, though, this uh, um, MG 1300 two door. Two door was relatively rare, but you can see them. Again, August 68 registered car. Very similar seats actually to the Walsley version. Strip speedo actually, even on the MG. So you didn't necessarily get a rev count in your MG, even though it's supposed to be sporty, which is interesting. And then uh, down here we've got a Mark III Morris 1300 Traveller. Yes, that is actually what they were called. This is, uh, I think, blaze red, which is sort of orange. You've got fake wood on the side. I wonder if one of these, or a Morris Meyer Traveller, which is bought in 71, would be a better car. Personally, I prefer these drivers, but the Morris Meyers I find a bit scary. These are, these are not too bad. The winner of um, the whole show last year, actually, was this particular car. It's a 7273 1300 GT. It's in beautiful condition, beautiful colour. Amazing. Crap wheels as well on that. And then a Mark II Walsley 1300 from 70 to 71. Had some uh, enhancements on there. We've got twin carbs on this one. And then um, an early Morris 1100 Traveller. I think this is a Mark I, so it'd be in 1100 only. Lovely colour, this. I can't remember the name of this now. Fantastic. 
and then a Ranger, which I presume was based on the same platform as the ADO 16s. I don't think I've ever seen one of these before. I don't think particularly um, I'd like to have a go in this today. But I don't have check your E-Type rear lights because we've got no weather protection whatsoever. And then uh, a nice Walsley 1300 automatic, seven, sorry, 6768 on an F, so it'd be an early one of those. Fabulous. Well, we've got a lot more to see, but we'll end this part here. Thank you ever so much once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below. We shall see you in part two for some more incorrect information.